Yo, what is going on guys? It is Austin and I am going to make basically an emergency recap here because something is going on with my trading that I, I just can't explain. But I've got eight green days in a row now. Last time I made a recap was here on Friday. Um, so I'm going to recap my trades from this week. <laughs> Actually, pretty funny. I literally just recorded this recap and my mic wasn't on, so I'm starting over. But a um, couple of reminders. I, I want you guys to follow me on Twitter if you are interested and use Twitter. Um, I literally just tweeted this today. No, you know, nobody really follows me on Twitter. It, it, it you know, it's fine, whatever. I, I use it kind of for me documenting some stuff. And then there's some people I follow and, um, you know, I like it. But um, I said four of my trading days. So this is what's going on. Four of my trading days over the last week have consisted of me going red, like one to 2000, only to recover into the green as action moves into lunchtime. What does this say about my trading? And then I responded to myself, <laughs> basically FOMOing the initial move. And then after that, good reacting and profit taking to basically fight back. So, you know, basically, you know, last Friday I did the recap, this running PNL is wrong. This is just, I don't even know, just to completely ignore that. But you can see the trades here, minus 500, minus 1100, minus 100, and then basically back to break even in one trade and then green on the day. Like, it's just the weirdest thing. And I thought, okay, well, that was a really weird trading day. But then, you know, on Monday here again, you know, big red and then fighting back to, to green. And then uh, again today, you know, going red, it actually was 1500 red. Um, it just is putting everything as 10 executions in this one trade. So it was actually minus 1500 at the at my worst drawdown of the day and then recovering back. So I don't like that. <laughs> I'd rather just go up instead of going big down and then recovering. But uh, anyway, so let me show you guys exactly what is going on here. Um, so let's, let's take a look. So Monday was pretty interesting. Um, this is Monday right here and I've got trades on NQ on Monday as well. So again, I already recorded this, but let's, you know, let's, let's redo this. Cause I, I, I messed up there. So anyway, this is just so weird, but if you look at this, uh, actually let me go to a five minute. So clearly in hindsight, I think I was looking at a one minute chart and just, you know, this is, I shouldn't even be trading this. It's just total chop. There's no move here, but I'm long 62 for some reason. So again, it's bad trading to start the day. Long 62.25, like literally the top of this candle. We come down, we come down, and then I'm out at 55 at the bottom of this candle, and then we rip up to 66 right here. Uh, really weird. FOMOing back in at 67, selling at 57. So there's another 10 point hit. So already down 17 points to start the day. And then right here, you know, losing another two points, not even sure what the heck I'm doing there. Um, so just really weird. Uh, just uh, when I look at that and look back at that, it's just, it makes no sense to me what I'm doing there at all. Um, but if we look at Monday on NQ, this is where I was able to recover. So here in 15 out 308, so I'm losing on NQ here as well. And then we're going to have to look at a five minute to, to look at uh, all the trades here in more detail. So shorting as we're kind of following down through here, but then we get bought back up. So this is just a weird, you know, loser here. Uh, Pretty sure this was a short um anyway and then shorting again as we try to break down again but then just getting bought back up so right back into just kind of some chop here but then i'm long 35 and i remember that we came up to 405 so i was up like 80 or i was up like 70 points on this trade uh which put me back to i assume break even or, or something somewhere somewhere close to that so this is where i started to turn it around buying this as we started to rip back up and kind of hold these lows. Um, and, you know, I can't fully recall all of my analysis at the moment because this was like several days ago. I might have had lines that I got rid of. I'm not really sure exactly, but, you know, to be honest with you, but long 35, that was a nice long. I mean, we're up to 83 right here just very quickly. Um, but I, I got out 75 as we just weren't really out. Yeah, so that's down here. So we we're starting to fall back in, and um, and what? I, oh yeah, I remember. I had driven. I had uh, drawn out the 
the kind of the bear flag that we were getting here and it was a bear flag right here and so once we broke out of that um starting you know trying to look for shorts so here i was sh uh actually it looks like i got long 60 out 61 for buying this move into the blue line um but then short 349 and check this out 349 down to 228 sorry 285 so that is a nice move right there that's a 65 point move or a 65 point winner on the short side right there to put me to green on monday so i was red a thousand on es it looks like uh or very close to a thousand and then green on nq um so yeah i don't know how i do it man but uh this was a nice short right here as we broke out of this bear flag and got continuation to the downside. So Tuesday um, was very weird, choppy action. We did get a move down, but you can see I didn't have any trades on ES on Tuesday at all. Um, I just had one trade on NQ as we started to pull away from this blue line that I've drawn. Again, I, I, I can't zoom out you know I, i'm not entirely sure where that blue line's coming from so that's those are the highs here so a bit of a level there as we started to crack that uh i got short and ended up being a pretty nice short covering here at uh at 128 so um like a you know what is that less than a 30 point winner there um so nice uh nice trade right there and that's all that's that's all I did on Tuesday. Um, and then Wednesday, similarly, I did not trade very much. You can see on ES again on Wednesday, I had no trades. Um, you know, you can look at this morning action, 930, just really nothing going on. Very low volume in anticipation of FOMC later in the day. Um, I just had one trade on uh, NQ, which was a just quick eight point scalp, uh, 406 to 414. That's pretty much all I did. I did have one trade on uh, on mes um and in hindsight i should still be holding this as as a swing because I, I i almost intended this to just be a swing as basically i can show you guys and it really should have been a swing but uh you know the longer term view here is that we just broke out of this major downtrend so the market is really starting to turn around and we're starting to get some huge momentum last couple of days which is pretty cool to see um and so I really should still be holding this as we've kind of broken out. Um, but in ahead of FOMC, that was kind of the critical moment. So before that, it was still a little bit uncertain. But um, with only one MES contract, I mean, it's pretty much just worth holding it. But I guess I didn't want to do that. So anyway, there you have that. And then moving to today. Um, today, once again, I was read 1500 and I'll show you it go to a one minute. And I, I know I was looking at a one minute on these trades and that's my downfall. I need to be looking at a 15 minute tar chart when I take these trades um, to get the bigger view of it. And that, and it, that will just be so much better. But here, you know, I had the right idea. Actually, you can see we have this bottom here from the morning at 8:30, and then we have this little bottom here and again this is on a one minute chart i know so it's just i should not be looking at a one minute chart but i wonder what this looks like if we look at a five minute so we've got this tail here we've got this bottom here so there's a clear level going on around here at uh, 4000 around 4003 or 4005 and so anyway I thought we might crack that level because we came down almost to it and then kind of started to buy back up. That's not a very true test of it. So usually I'd like to see it close here. If we're going to get a bounce, it should close right at that level or we get a wick all the way down to that level and then, you know, start to buy up from there. But because we didn't really get a true test of it, I thought we were going to come back in. And if we do, we probably break. So anyway, I'm short 4,001 as we break below, but we just don't get that follow through. And, you know, there's a Another reason I like this trade is we came into that 4040 level off the open and rejected it. This is a very nice double top. Um, so just trying to play the failure back in. I know I missed a lot of the move, but I still thought we might get a move down to 4980. It's not really crazy to think that we might have done that because of this double top to kind of fill out the entire pattern might bring us down to 3980. But anyway, so that did not happen. We got some choppiness here and it ended up turning around, but I had some some one more bad trade here so stopped out 4008 and then here as we started to crack again i'm short just on the break of the low but 
just more choppiness. It's not happening. I should have just gotten out as I got out this. I got the second chance to get out right here. As we started to pick back up, I should have just been instantly out, but I was greedy. I didn't, you know, I didn't. I saw my PL. I was like, I don't want to be down 500, but then of course it got worse. So I ended up being down, you know, 12 points on this trade with the seven here, two trades, and I'm basically down $1,000 already on the day. So already the emotions are running high at that point. And I'm just like, man. What did I do wrong? You know, we're shorting kind of below the low. We start to pull away from the zone, but then no, we're right back in. So once this, the, the, the truth is, I was looking at the five minute and once this candle closed green, this is something you see very often where you get these kind of a couple dojis and then you get that ripper, right? So I knew we were going to get that ripper. I really was thinking in my head. Once this candle opened, I thought this is going to be that ripper. And it really was. And I didn't get out until 4,007. I should have just been out. And I could have saved myself like seven points. That would have been really, really good if I had just done that. But I, I, I didn't. So um, anyway, so I just took more heat. I, or I took a bigger loss there than I than I should have. But then uh, <laughs> flipping over to NQ, some weird trades here, man. So as we started to pick back up, I was like, okay, I like how we're starting to pull away from this now. This is actually looking more bullish to me because we're just not breaking down. We're getting that that pep now. Um, and I got long here. All I was doing was just targeting this zone at this blue line that I've got. Quick little level there, just trying to get price to come up to that level and I'll be out. But as we started to come back in, I got out and then right back in. <laughs> Why? You know, obviously that's just not good trading. My strategy is supposed to be, when I'm trading my strategy, it's supposed to be a level to level strategy. And that once price comes into a level, you know, you get long and then you play the move to the next level. Or once you get a break of a level, you, sh you know, you take the trade on the break of the level for the next level up. Um, so I try to look for price to run into certain into certain levels, into certain trend line resistance or support or whatever you have it, and then just play that bounce or, 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 or you know, what have you. Or if it, we break a level, play the break. Anyway, clearly that's not really what I'm doing here. And so that's a mistake. But I got right back long. And I think the reason for that was I think at the time I flipped to finally the 15 minute chart. I mean, of course, as the day goes on, I'm constantly flipping between time frames, but I really need to not look at the one minute like i almost wish i could just call td ameritrade and just be like yeah can you just take the one minute just off of my just just get it off my platform so that i can't even look at it because it just i don't think it does me any good um but actually i'll take that back in a second because yes when i looked at this i looked at the 15 minute chart and when I saw, once this candle closed green and it engulfed this red candle, and I thought, this is starting to look like a false breakdown, right? We're trying to break through this low here. We're trying to break through the lows, but we're just not getting it. We're not getting that follow through, right, that I'm talking about on the ES. We're starting to curl. Um, so buyers are definitely in play. And once this candle opened up, I remember just getting long. And so I'm long here uh at 96 and then just playing up to the blue line and i'm out at 16 actually not even the blue line um if you look at the five minute i didn't even let it get to there i just wanted out at these uh at the pivot at 16 right here right here that's that's all i was looking for just a quick winner to just get me back into the game uh, get get a little confidence back. So 96 to 16, nice 20 point winner there. Uh, that's $400. So again, things can change quickly with futures. So I was down 1,500, then $400 winner there. Um, and then as we started to just hang out at VWAP, just I, it just the price action. You really can feel it sometimes. Like it's it, it may sound like a you know crystal ball, but really like when you're watching the price action, you can start to feel that the buyers are just super super strong, right? Any sells are just getting bought back up. So I'm right back in at 46. We instantly start to push to 53. I could have taken the seven points there. We quick pull back, and then all I wanted my target was just this this purple line, and. I can show you on this other chart on NQ, that purple line that I just showed you is this purple line right here, the main downtrend resistance. So, you know, you know, it's the downtrend resistance on the daily chart. So on a one minute, you know, it's not, I don't know. So, but I, we did tap that pretty perfectly and then we did rip through it, but I was out at 63 right at that purple line for another, you know, little 17 point winner right there. 
Um, so, you know, just kind of scalping out this move higher right here in at 91 um, on the open of this candle. And then this candle just rips up and then I'm out at 607 uh, on this candle. So that's another 16 point winner. Um, and then I scalped a little point and a half here. So after all those little scalps on the way up, I actually ended up being up like 600 on the NASDAQ at that point. So then all of a sudden down a thousand here, up 600 here, I was only down like 400 on the day at that point. Um, and you know, one more reason that I was taking these scalps is, you know, with this scalp, it was just playing price to come up into this into this area, right? We've got some congestion here. We've got some congestion here. Just looking for price to, to, to come into there, uh, into that zone one more time, uh, which would make a lot of sense. And of course it did. And then as we start to rip back up, another breakout through that congestion looking for new highs it just all starts to kind of make sense when you zoom out and you look at those higher time frames we got the double top we failed but now uh oh false breakout and now we got some real short squeeze action coming up it really if you were watching the price action felt like a short squeeze and then once we start to make new highs the game's really on where we can start to to kind of right align all those time frames and look at how it makes sense that we just are seeing that finally seeing that breakout right and and when you get a breakout it can be pretty big right you expect some momentum but you don't get those big moves just right off the open just start just going up right you need some you need some some energy and how do you get those energies with the big imbalance and the uh -oh, uh oh shorts get trapped and then boom you get that energy that spike so all those things kind of make sense to me um so just that overall confidence that like yeah we're grinding higher I, you know today's probably going to be a big green day it's just about being careful with your entries and and exits even right here i'm long on the es so this is my last trade on the day so still down a thousand on the es at that point still down like 400 on the day green 600 here red uh red red 500 on the ES or red a thousand on the es but that would change i got long if you look at the 15 minute literally at the high but what was my thinking here well we had just cracked through that 40 40 spot right so that's big heavy resistance we double topped there and then we fail break below look at that failed breakout you can really see that with that blue line failed breakout and then ripping right back up and when we rip back up failed breakout we buy back up into the zone the target becomes the opposite end of the uh, of the range. I was too busy scalping it out on the NASDAQ, but I should have been long there, of course. But um, on that 15 minute, really, really nice. Obvious target is is 4040, the opposite side of of the range, the, the top end of the range. And this just looks great. Once we break through that double top, this just looks like we're kind of off to the races there. And the next level up, it, it was, you know, going to be 4070 for me. So on this 15 minute candle it opened we pulled back and i literally set my i set an order to buy stop one tick above the high of day so i was like okay we're getting that pullback we're, we're coming down to test that 40 40 spot right back test it um and i really am a big fan of that's one of my 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 big my main entries is is a back when we back test when you back test a core level I like to get in on that support, right? Old resistance becomes becomes new support. So so that resistance, expecting that to become support. We didn't even come down and tap it, but I had my buy stop where I had my buy stop and I was getting long at 53.25. Um, why is my trade not showing up actually? I just realized my trades weren't showing up. So you can see long 53.25 as we just tap a new high. And then, so there was some congestion here, some consolidation, right? But we're consolidating above um that 40 40 zone and as long as that's the case this looks good and then we get that that rip up this touch 77 and on the first pullback i'm out uh 71 um you know i wish i had i had gotten out at the exact top but you know a nice uh capture of of, of that kind of second leg right so um just playing that level to level so i like I have this problem where at the beginning of the day, I'm like FOMOing around on the one minute, scalping out, just being an idiot where I need to just take a chill pill, look at the 15 minute, start to like just chill, you know, not, I, I can't really be fully, I, I, I guess I shouldn't be too harsh on myself because I, I did have the right idea shorting below as we, as we crack this level here. But, you know, false breakouts happen. So I guess at the end of the day, it was a good thing that I stopped out at, you know, and I, I did I did stop out at, at 4,007. If I just hadn't stopped out, 
You know, I, I think there's a day where, where the old Austin trader, uh, you know, just doesn't stop out. Um, and, you know, we would never come back. So I would have been waiting all day and I would have been down 100 points. <laughs> I mean, obviously, can't let that happen. So I did well to recover and just play this level to level as we started to crack that 40 40 i knew i was getting in high so yeah i was nervous but i did the right thing which was to get long uh after the pullback and uh yeah i waited through i took a little bit of heat on this as we came down to 46 but nice uh move up into the 70s and i'm out for an 18 point winner and that put me to down 75 dollars on the es versus down 975 so after that uh up 500 dollars on the day and that is today um, there's one more thing I want to point out. I was long in this ES trade, but, oh shoot, I really wish I hadn't gotten rid of that trend line, of those lines. Let me see if I can, if I can put it back, but I had a line, oh man, where was that? Right here? Um, so, yeah, I think it was, it was something like this, uh, I think it was the line right there. Yeah, so that looks about right. So I think I had this line here. And uh, I just want to point out how perfect this back test is um, on even the one minute. So let me see where... Shoot, I really wish I hadn't gotten rid of that line. Uh, it was literally perfect. Um, it's not perfect here. I... I wish I could, I'm going to try to make it perfect because it really was. And I was watching it real time. I was like, man, this looks great. Yeah. So just like that, look at that. So if you go to like the three minute, look how nicely this, this trend line is, or look how, look how beautiful this trend line is. You connect these, this high to this high. And not only do you get the congestion here and then the breakout above that, but then you get a back test here, a back test here. Look at how nice that back test is to fresh highs. I saw that happen and I was looking at the one minute and I once I saw this candle, I was like, that back test is gonna work. This is the long spot. I should be getting long here. I didn't even try to punch long on the NASDAQ because I was already long on the ES. So I thought, well, if this looks good on the NASDAQ and it's a back test, I mean, the ES is gonna move up too. So I, I've already got exposure to this move basically, but I did think about like, this looks great. And um, and I was, I was watching this and I really did think right here that that was gonna be a beautiful long spot. And so that was the trend line I had in place. I, I, I got rid of it because, you know, on this chart, it doesn't make any sense, but um, I don't like how TOS, like, I wish you could just have lines on certain time frames, but anyway. I will get rid of that line once again because I do not think it will be relevant anymore. But I did want to point that out that if you had that trend line drawn, you would have caught a very, very nice entry. I was already exposed to the ES at that point. But so I need to like not trade. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I guess today maybe it was unavoidable. I tried to short the low. I should have been out quicker, should have stopped out quicker. And uh but I guess it happens sometimes. Um, I almost think that on the ES, I didn't really make as many mistakes. That trade on the NQ, however, that I lost 500 on uh, right here, that was a mistake, 509 to 83. I don't know. I guess that was a mistake. Or, or selling it was a mistake. I'm not really sure what happened here, but uh, anyway. All right, guys. Please, if you guys do appreciate these recaps and uh you know trade futures or enjoy this content whatever all the above please slap that like button <laughs> and uh and subscribe um because i'll be posting these recaps more often let's see what tomorrow brings i feel like if i can just you know not if i can just not go down and then have to come back and fight back to green you know, if I can just go straight up, I might have really big green days. Because, I mean, I went from down 1,500 up 500. So I made 2,000 from bottom to top. Um, but anyway, and I've, and I've done that like three or four times in the last week. So it's literally, literally been multiple times, like twice last week and twice this week, where I've gone down like 1,500, 1,800, 1,400, whatever it might be, and then recovering to green. So I, I, I don't know how I'm doing it, but... Um, I need to just go up, not down and then up. <laughs> but at least, at least 
I'm, I don't know. I, it's encouraging that I'm able to fight back like that, but you know, I do have this rule that once I'm down a thousand, I stop trading and clearly I've broken that rule four or five times. So it's not even a rule at this point. Do I regret breaking the rule? Like not really because my, like that was, that's worked out for me multiple times. So I may need to rethink that rule, but I don't know. Anyway, so I'm kind of a, my brain's kind of a melting pot of, of, of thoughts at this point, but, um, but yeah, like the video, follow me on Twitter, uh, subscribe to my channel, just, you know, blow me up guys. Um, and, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next recap and join the discord. Cause I, I'm very active in the discord talking about futures. So if you were a futures trader, please join the discord and, uh, I'd love to get your thoughts and we can chat it in there. And, uh, yeah, that's it. All right, guys. Love you all. Bye-bye.